Hey guys, it's Nena, and today I'm going to be talking to you about what I read in November. So I'm putting up this wrap up a little bit late. Of course, I meant to put it up a few weeks ago, but I just didn't get around to filming it. Things look a little bit different behind me. That's because I am back home in California in my childhood room. So I had a little time and I was like, let's catch up and talk about my November reads. So the first thing I read in November was a book that I was really looking forward to, and that was Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff. You've probably heard a little bit about this book. There's been a lot of buzz. It got nominated for the National Book Award and also something else, I'm pretty sure. I just feel like this book has been everywhere. It sounded super interesting, so I really wanted to pick it up. Fates and Furies is about a married couple, Lotto and Mathilde and they are the golden couple. Lado comes from a rich family and he's kind of been spoiled and coddled a bit and he's popular with everyone. And Mathilde is his equal. She is beautiful and intelligent and everyone envies their relationship. So the story is split into two parts. First we get Lado's perspective and then we get Mathilde's perspective. So there were several things that I found really interesting about this book. One was the way that it was structured. I knew that we'd get to hear both sides of the story, and I kind of expected that Matilde's perspective and Lotto's would overlap, but really her story, her section starts where we've left off. Rather than going back, we continue on with the story from her perspective. So I thought that was an interesting choice. Also, the writing style was really intriguing to me. I know some people didn't love the writing style, but I thought it was really interesting. There are all these little asides and brackets where a, a voice is kind of throwing in their own opinion, their own two cents. I really liked the little asides, and they were done in a way that, I mean, Naturally, they do bring you out of the story because it's something else in brackets, but they were done in a way that I felt really worked, for me at least. To me, the novel read a bit like an oral history. It felt somewhat like someone was telling the story of these two people, and I really enjoyed that aspect of it. I thought Fates and Furies was a really great character study. It's interesting to see how these two characters view each other and how they see each other. And, of course, when you're getting both sides of the story, it becomes clear that sometimes we only see what we want to see. And another question that the author kind of asks is, can you ever really know everything about a person? And can you ever really truly know someone? Those themes, I think, are really fascinating. We also see how, when you're in a couple and in a marriage, how p two people can shape each other and change the course of each other's lives. I really liked that all of the characters were different and interesting and well-developed, and I really liked the writing. It captured me pretty much from the first page. You can tell that the author is really intelligent because there are a lot of references to Greek plays, a lot of allusions and connections to other things in literature, some of which I got and some of which I know I didn't, but I was listening to the Slate Audio Book Club podcast and they discussed the book and criticized a few things and one of the criticisms was that there were a lot of interesting elements at play and they didn't quite add up for them. And I can see that. There were a lot of different things going on, but for me, each thing that the author was trying to do or explore was so intriguing that I was just... I was just along with her for the ride. So I will leave the link down to that podcast below because it's interesting to hear other people discuss the book. And I gave this one four out of five stars. The next book I read was Heidi by Joanna Speary, and this is a children's classic. I read my lovely little Puffin and Bloom edition, and it was just really sweet. So in the story of Heidi, she is a young girl who is orphaned and she is living with her aunt, but then her aunt decides to pursue a job in Frankfurt. So she takes Heidi to live with her grandfather up in the mountains. Now everyone in the village on the way to the mountains thinks this is a terrible idea because her grandfather is kind of a loner and a hermit and they don't think that he should be trusted with a child. There was kind of an incident back in the day between her grandfather and some of the people in the village. So. He, since that incident, he kind of retired to the mountains, but once Heidi goes to live with him, she is able to bring him out of her shell, and they develop a really special bond, and things take off from there. So I just thought it was a really sweet story. I don't know, I guess after Fates and Furies, I was in the mood for something light and just 
charming. Also, I've seen the Shirley Temple version of the movie many, many times, and I love Shirley Temple. I just think she's darling. So that, of course, was played in my head. The book was a bit different from that story, so I don't... I guess they, you know, they took some liberties with the movie, as far as I can remember. There was a very strong religious element that came across in the book, and I can't remember if that's quite emphasized in the movie, but overall I enjoyed it and I gave it three stars. Then I read an absolutely delightful book, and that was Weird Things Customers Say in Bookstores by the lovely Jen Campbell. In case you didn't already know, she has a YouTube channel, so I will leave a link down to that below so that you can check out her videos, which are awesome. And I picked up her book during the Brooklyn Book Festival, just because I hadn't read any of her work, and it's basically exactly what the title sounds like. She works in a bookstore, and over the course of several years, she's had all sorts of interesting encounters with customers. So she started to keep track of them and write about them on her blog, which eventually became the idea behind this book. It has quotes from conversation that Jen has had with people, and it also has quotes from different booksellers around the world. And actually, uh, my local bookstore, the one here in Bakersfield, California, they had a quote in the book. What are the chances? I don't know, I just thought it was really cool to see the name of my local bookstore in this book. So this book was delightful, I chuckled out loud while reading it very quick, I think I finished it in like an hour or less, and I think any book lover would love this book. So 5 out of 5 stars for that one. Finally, the last book I finished in November was Blue Lily, Lily Blue by Maggie Stiefeter, and this is the third book in the Raven Cycle series. I read the first two in September? August? October? <laughs> I cannot remember, but earlier this year I read the first two and enjoyed them. I liked the first one more than the second one. I don't really want to go too much into plot since it is the third book in a series, but I feel like the group really comes back together in this one and continues on their quest, and I just really like having the entire group of characters interact together as opposed to focusing more on one of the characters. I think for me, this is more of an ensemble cast rather than, you know, about one character. Of course, they all end on cliffhangers, so I'm like, I really want the fourth book, but it's not coming out until 2016, so I'll have to wait for that one. But I gave this 4 out of 5 stars. That is everything that I read in November. Uh, thank you for watching this very late November wrap-up. And right now, I am trying to meet my Goodreads goal. I've been on a real YA kick recently, and specifically YA fantasy slash historical fiction. So right now, I'm reading Story of the Exiles, which is the second book in the Lumetier Chronicles, and I really like these books. They're so good. So you'll hear me talk more about that in my next wrap-up, but I'm trying really hard to meet my Goodreads goal. Five books to go as of the day I'm filming this. Thank you so much for watching, and I also wanted to say thank you so much for sticking around. I know I have not been consistent with uploading videos, especially this past month, and it's something I want to work on again next year, but I also don't want to force it, I guess I should say. So just want to say thank you for sticking around and thank you for still being here when I do pop in. I hope you all are having a lovely Tuesday. Let me know what you're currently reading uh, down in the comments below. And since it's been a while, let's catch up. Tell me anything you want to tell me down in the comments below. Thank you again, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Thank you.